Today we're going to spend a little time talking about leaf diseases in wheat and it really depends on the time of year when we see some of these diseases out there. So for example, very early on in the year it's tan spot. Very late in the year we see a lot more rust species. But whatever the case, whatever the disease is, what we really care about is, is it profitable to spray a fungicide and that's what we really want to get into today. All right, let's start right from the beginning then, Brandon, start with early season issues. You mentioned tan spot right away, and we see it so frequently across wheat fields, it's almost like uh, I just have to look a little bit harder and I'm for sure going to find it out there. So oftentimes farmers are putting in a fungicide with that first herbicide pass, but I would just say this, if you've got a bad disease problem out there, don't wait. You want to be out in front of those diseases, and here's how these products work when we talk about fungicides. You'll hear about, well, there's preventative products and there's curative products. Let me just take that right off the table because there aren't any of these fungicides that I would say, oh yeah, if I've got a big problem out in my field, they're going to cure it. So I don't like that term, curative. Yes, we can maybe stop a disease infection so it doesn't get worse, but once that damage is done, we can't undo it. So the big thing here when we're talking about leaf diseases is you have to be out in front of them with your fungicide application. Which creates a real problem because how do you know if you're going to have a bad disease issue or not? Yes, you can look at history. Yes, you can look at the weather. And you can also say, I have more susceptible varieties versus some others that may be a little more resistant to certain diseases. But you can throw all that out the window because no one really knows if you're going to have a disease for sure or not. So when you go into each growing season, you just have to ask yourself, all right, are the odds fairly high that I'm going to have an issue? And what I really care about is over time, if I was to do this, let's say every year, would it pay on average to treat with a fungicide? And Brian, like we're talking about this first application of fungicide, and we'll, we'll move on to, to a little bit bigger wheat as well. But with that first application, we want to have really good coverage. And if you're also mixing a herbicide in the tank, now you got a few different things going on here. Well, what do I need for a spray coverage for that herbicide that I'm putting out there? Maybe I'm a little concerned about drift, so I have to use some drift reduction nozzles. All of a sudden, we've got big droplets landing on tiny little leaves out there for your wheat plants that's not gonna give you great coverage, so you aren't going to get the best out of your fungicide. So do talk about that with your retailer as well. Which nozzles are gonna work for my tank mix? Yeah, but the good news, Darren, is we don't have a lot of the major drift issues in wheat that we would in, say, soybeans, where you're gonna spray dicamba, and it's the middle of the summer. Most of the time in wheat, the products do like and do work a little better when we have more water, a little higher spray pressure, a little smaller droplet, so that fits right into exactly what you're talking about for the best performance with fungicides. And when we talk about fungicides, just understand, because they only move in the xylem of the plant, which only moves upward, you can never have that fungicide protecting anything lower on the plant than where you physically get the spray. So that's why coverage is so important. Hey, Brian, one other thing, too, I, I should mention, and we, we kind of started with this herbicide application timing. I should have mentioned the seed treatment because we do see some early season disease prevention with that seed treatment fungicide, especially with some of the advanced ones now where we're putting multiple modes of action right on the seed. So we do have a little window of time there that we rarely see a disease problem if you're using a seed treatment. Then we come back in with this herbicide application, oftentimes with just a half rate of most fungicides because we've got such a small plant that we're dealing with. But as those plants get bigger, we need to use stronger rates of product to get good disease prevention. So usually we do say at herbicide timing, throw a fungicide in there. You can use a low rate. There are many low rates approved, labeled, no problem with that. They have good efficacy. And you know, when you're only talking two to five dollars an acre, not a real big expense. And you're already out there making a trip with the herbicide. So it's not like you have a whole bunch of expense. Two to five extra dollars, most of the time that's going to pay. Just think about your thick stand of wheat, all the moisture it traps down there. You're undoubtedly going to have at least some disease pressure. We would really encourage 
would you try that timing? Now the next timing for spraying is usually flag leaf and that's the most important leaf to protect on that plant. I would say when you look at a lot of the university trials, that's when they show the best yield gain from spraying a fungicide. But let's keep in mind, now you're gonna use a full rate, so you're gonna spend more on the fungicide and you probably have to make a separate application so you've got the cost of the application too. So in total, the cost of that trip is gonna be significantly more than the cost of the first trip. Now, the good thing is when we look at all the diseases that we're seeing out there, and I'd include stripe rust in this too, Brian, I think that's one of the biggest ones that we're after trying to control. We've got to use multiple modes of action, and if we do, we're able to control most diseases that we're seeing in wheat in the United States. Now, in other parts of the world, there are some diseases that are a little tougher to control that we're not getting with the current products that we have available on the market. But in the United States, we've had really good luck using products that have two to three modes of action, spraying them foliar on the wheat, and just focusing on getting good coverage to prevent disease outbreaks. So we talked about herbicide timing, flag leaf timing, and then the final timing is heading. And usually this is at early flowering when we encourage people to spray. It's just a little bit different than the other two timings. You can't just use anything. You want to avoid the strabiliarin products, things like headline, quadris, evito, for example, at heading timing, because when those products get sprayed, we see a higher incidence of Don. Basically, we're getting more toxins introduced into that plant because of the spraying of the strobiliarin at that point. So avoid the strobes when you're spraying late. Yeah, we're typically using triazoles and even SDHIs at that point, but we're looking for two things. Yes, the fusarium head blight is one. The other one is rust. And we've got some excellent rust products in the triazole family that we're using late in the season. Once again, when it comes to the different leaf diseases in wheat, we're not necessarily so concerned about your identification of these diseases, although that would be super nice. But more than anything, what we want is for you to figure out, hey, is this going to pay or is it not? You have to look a little bit at the weather, susceptible varieties, everything else, and run trials on your own farm. And then just basically ask yourself, is this going to pay over time? On our farm, we have found we absolutely are spraying at all the three timings that we mentioned to you at herbicide, at flag leaf, and at heading. We found that on average, each one of those pays. There are lots of new products. We'd encourage you to use multiple modes of action so you can control the diseases out there without worrying about resistance. And ultimately, hopefully, you're making a little more yield and some more profit on your farm. Well, one thing that you'll be looking for out in many of those same fields is our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop it coming up next.